Anyway, while I'm waiting for David to come, um, you know, it, it's rare. We have Brian Blade here. If anybody has a couple of questions you just want to throw out while we're waiting, should actually perform or whatever. Does anybody have any questions for any of us? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Nowadays, <laughs> um, well, and maybe it was it was all always like this, but I, perhaps I had more time when I was in school daily just to physically be at the drums, so you know, sit and, and meditate. Now it's a constant practice. The, the thoughts of, of ideas that. Uh, it almost turns into uh, like a 24-hour visualization mm -hmm. you know, of, of, uh, of, of of music, you know, uh, of sound. Um, not that not that the physicality and the challenges, you know, sitting here aren't still, you know, <laughs> they're in the mirror, uh, you know, every time you sit and face it. But uh, but I find that. Um, like I say, uh, I don't, um, maybe it's 15 minutes a day, you know, that I, I, I go out and I like get well. <laughs> yeah, I keep my, keep my drums set up all the time, you know, so I can just, even in passing, just sit and just play for a minute, play ideas. So that's mostly what, what I do if I'm not at the drums. I'm thinking of ideas, thinking of Sounds because you know just my footsteps in motion, they set off sparks. You know, mm -hmm. like you know, all of a sudden you're writing a song, you know, or or you're you're creating rhythms, you know, within your step. And so, you do you do such complex music, man. Some of the records I've heard you play are just amazing, man. So you must be an amazing reader, first of all, but also, but no, but I mean, but when at what point do you feel like when you're doing? complex music that you feel is challenging to you, whatever, at what point do you feel like, I have this down? Or do you ever feel, do you ever feel like you have it down? Or do you feel like you're confident that mm -hmm. I can execute this music? You know? well, and, and how much preparation do you need to, to, to do that? It, it depends, you know, that sometimes you're not, you don't have a lot of time right. to, to prepare. So you're, you're hoping that everything you, you've done up to this point has right. prepared you for this moment and you can make those choices in, you know, in an instant. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to, that's something Johnny V taught me too, like um, aside from the precision in which he would play through something, because I, I saw him do it many times, he would create like a subtext. <laughs> he would create this under rhythm, this underpinning, this, this thread below that, bound it all together. And so I think I, I'm trying to do that more than almost anything. Like, mm -hmm. like as I listen, okay, what does it need to, 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 uh, to add more adhesive to the thing, to make it you know, uh, more of one thing? And sometimes it could be you not playing. That's going to make it right. So, I, so to be able to make those instant choices, um, I hope I'm getting better at that because you know the more opportunities you have to play every day. You know. I think that's the thing to me that really impressed me about you and Johnny is you just you're orchestrators. I mean, you, you know how to take the band and and orchestrate the sound rather than just playing the drums. I mean, you're playing the music, but you're creating this this instant orchestration that, that makes the band sound right, just makes the music sound right. You know. Is that the way you kind of think? I mean, it's, it's almost like painting with the drums or whatever. Well, I hope so, you know, because I've been, I've been so fortunate and blessed. I mean, I play with my heroes, and I play with people I, I trust. And I hope that I'm giving that thing that, that, that sort of allows them that same trust to take those chances and to know that okay, I don't have to, you know, necessarily right, right. be marking time. I can be coloring, and the pulse is going to, we're going to be flowing. You know, it's not going to fall apart. If you're not hearing the backbeats, you know. So, I mean, that, but also those those situations where you're in a situation and and it's not uh, that unspoken understanding and it's grooving and you need to fix it. How do you become a, a troubleshooter? <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I think 
you know, it's been so rare that I'm almost not prepared to, oh, to, yeah. to be that guy because... Well, know, no, that, can, that function can atrophy. <clears throat> I tell my students that. Because you know, when I play with these guys, I'm listening to them. Right. Yeah, and um, you, but then you end up in a situation where you have to listen to yourself. Wow. For bass, I think maybe perhaps more. I don't know. No, well, I, I feel like, you know, our function, it, it's still... You, you get far away from just realizing your fundamental role in the band as yeah. spec drums, bass, you know, delivering a uh, feel. You know, so I get spoiled with that freedom, but it always, all, all, the, all the feel, all the freedom has to coexist, it has to exist at one time so that, so that you, don't, uh, you don't miss anybody. And, and hopefully you don't miss anything. How do you two get uh, individual voices as accompanists, a new drummer and bassist, you know, and always playing with other people? But I can remember being very frustrated when I started. And, and the easiest example is I was playing with Mose Allison, whose music is very, uh, he brings a huge amount of information to the bandstand. He's, singing lyrics, he's playing very strange, non-traditional, but called jazz music. And I was, you know, just had my head up my ass as a 20-year-old, and I, I wanted to be James Singleton, interesting bass player. And I, it was a wake-up call, because I realized, well, no, you have a job to do. You know, and he just told me five things. Well, don't do this, and don't do that, and don't do that what's left, you know? <laughs> and then how do I become myself? But I think the quick answer is, you do become yourself by more and more deeply um, attuning yourself to the needs of the moment. And then you have to be patient. And then aspects of your personality come to the fore and become something you can exploit and start composing and create an identity for yourself. <laughs> But, and, and that felt like a huge victory the first time I played with him, which was years later. The first time I played with him and felt like, wow, I gave him what he wanted, but I was still myself. And I, I did you guys ever play with Johnny Bashman? No, well, no, not yet. He was, he, was a, he was a lounge <laughs> pianist singer. He, he, had a, he was A-list Broadway dancer who had a career-ending injury, ended up in New Orleans, Every song's in G. No bridge. He won't go to the bridge to any dune because he just doesn't know them. He just plays on the white notes. It was just a tooth puller. And I lasted like one gig, and Herlin was there for four years. And I said, I said, Herlin, how did you do that? He said, Jim, I have no choice. I had two kids already. I had to do that. I said, I said well, what, what did you do? And he said, I figured out how to give him exactly what he wanted and simultaneously practice my shit. <laughs> Alright. There he is. Alright. By the way, this is Mr. David Tarkowski. This is very rare as, as well because this is uh, this might be the first time we play as the Astro Project with the pianist. He's been on vacation. In ten years. <laughs> been a long vacation. No comment. <laughs> What about, what about Lauren Z? It's easy. Huh? It's easy? Yeah.
straight ahead. Want to do uh, truth? Yeah. 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 Let's, we're gonna we're gonna throw a little shout chorus at you at the end too. So okay, <laughs> it's a big drum feature. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's how it works. Matt, do you remember? No. Go with one note. Okay. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Oh, don't tell me. Right on. Oh, thank you.
It's like constantly, like at any moment, there's like a wide dynamic realm. And then, and, and my perception is that the kind of, the default level within that is like relatively kind of medium-ish, and it, it seems relatively quiet to what most people pick. And so I'm wondering, is this something that you consciously worked on, or is it just kind of like the fallback of your personality, or like did you do any kind of thinking about that, or because or, I've heard a lot of drummers in this room, so I'm kind of familiar with how they sound usually here, and you sound quite different. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's cumulative, you know, uh, experience uh, that that were you know, given to me. Uh, again, Johnny V, he, he said, go listen to Ernie Ellick down at the top. I go see Ernie Ellick. And man, it's incredible the, the depth and, and, and groove through all these through all these pieces, but he was never really going out. Like maybe at the end of a setup, you know. He, mm -hmm. But it was always this this current, you know, like um, that never uh, obscured to anything else. It was all, all there, all the time. So that was that was really helpful. And playing, and you know, like at the Sheridans and George French and Bill Burnett, you know, there was like this, you know, cacophonous space. You know, there's nothing to grab onto. You couldn't send a shock wave of sounds into the place without just like <clears throat> sending people running. You know, so with a four second. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so there was a, 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 a it, that you know, it helped me a lot. Try and understand, okay, what can you adjust in, in an instant to the environment? Not, not to have the environment tell it, you know, the tail doesn't wag the dog, but you gotta somehow reconcile that body and make it one thing and make it feel right, and still hopefully make it feel like it's got got teeth too, you know. Um, so it's it's a it's it's process. <laughs> I'm still I'm still in it. Thank you for um, the uh, you know trying you know noticing the dynamic. Um, it's 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 Art Blakey too, you know, it's like I, just in my life I feel like one time I could play a press roll with all that information and I quit. <laughs> I'd be like I did it. I did it once but I like to do it every time just <laughs> and just like it's humbling, so it's like always some another another one, you know. Another, another. Yeah, the wider the dynamic for drummers, that's that seems to be one of the big differences between great drummers and good drummers. Because yeah. Johnny always had that, and we we do clinics. We've done clinics over the years a lot, and you never seen him teach it. I think perhaps, and kind of what you said makes it seem like it's it's an outgrowth of something else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't. Well, you want to be able to play soft, loft, soft and loud, obviously, but right. but when? That's the big question. Yeah. How do we? How can we make music? You know, together. Yeah. Well, I feel like the cool thing is like you kind of can play soft and loud at the same time. Oh, well, that's, that's the hat trick. Yeah, 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 that's an interesting thing. So it's like when you punch something, it really means something because it's on top of sort of what feels like a very cruising kind of level, you know? And it's One thing I noticed with Vodakovich, he could smash it, and he would, it, the reason it sounded like two dynamic levels at the same time is he knew the decay of that smash 
and would give you a quiet note right at the instant that you would notice it. Right. So that that makes you feel better. <laughs> You know, one thing I noticed, I've heard Brian, whether it's playing with uh, Matt Lemler's uh, arranged orchestra or whether he's playing with Lanois, he always uh, seeks to orchestrate the music very, very colorfully, and he does it through dynamics and, and timbres. And uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a slamming situation or if it's an organic, you know, um, organic music situation. He, he always adjusts beautifully. In fact, that's he's known for. So we got two songs. One running north wind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, Brian and Johnny B are in a category by themselves for me. I don't know of any other drummers that play with that kind of subtlety and that kind of interaction. And you know, even great, you know, great drummers that I play with, I, I, I always miss that because I, you know, I play with Johnny so much that, that I'm so used to having a, a, a conversation with the drummer. A lot of times, even great drummers would just, you know, play time straight ahead and sound great, but they don't. They just have very limited interaction with with the uh, the soloists, so I mean, it's like it's really very special. I mean, it's a very special thing. All right, we're going to do a tune that uh, we haven't played with David before. I haven't played with Brian before, but um, this is a song of mine that I wrote called uh, "North Wind," and uh, as the title suggests, we're going to start with some wind.
questions in between? Anybody have a question about coffee? Yeah. I guess I just have a question. Um, I I really like what you said about the time or the feel being like a current underneath. I really appreciate uh, where the I wish you might not call them fills, but I guess how you comp is very uh, it's very spacious, but the the time is still there. And I was wondering, I see you're very relaxed in your shoulders and your head, and um, wondering how you think about time and if you think about it. Um, I guess, I, I guess I'll say that I have a problem, or I think it's a problem at least, with divorcing my, my bodily movements from the time as it is in the, and I, I wondered if you have any thoughts about that. Um, I mean, again, it's, um, it's company that allows that, that confidence to, I mean, that's, you know, you bring yourself, but, you know, when you're making music together, you want to be able to, to have that conversation. But, I mean, starting from just myself, I remember, it, it was, again, Johnny V, I, I think I might have watched something of myself playing, and, and I talked to him about it. My shoulders were, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was up here, I don't know why, the whole gig. And it was that realization, like, intensity doesn't have to be tension. Like, especially in the body. Like, he can play with intensity, and not, but hopefully keep keep yourself, you know, in that Bruce Lee mode, so. <laughs> you know, like, you know, Johnny brought that to my attention. He's like, you know, just, it's like, relax yourself. And I watched him when I, when I watched him play, you know, snare drum, bass drum, a couple of cymbals, no toms, <laughs> a lot of times. But, and he hit his leg would be over here. <laughs> and he, you know, he'd just be playing. I, and I'd think, man, he's not even really playing, is he? <laughs> but, man, there was so much being generated. So I, I'd watch, you know, try and replicate what he was doing, you know, and not successfully. But I, I was trying to, you know, observe what it was. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, that kept that flow and intensity but without, without tension. So when you say you have trouble divorcing your, what was it? But like bodily movement and, um, from, the, from the concept of time that I guess we all share. On yeah. That. I mean, uh, again, I, I don't know, I think, I think that it starts with you, you're already aware of kind of an issue there. Mm -hmm. So the more you get to play, alone and with others, I think just be, be conscious of that, you know. I, I have, you know, I have so many to look to, dear friends, you know, like, I'd be playing with um, my friend Chris Thomas, you know, they were already pretty advanced when I moved to New Orleans, you know, and all these, you know, like, incredible, you know, and that after project was playing, and I was at every gig, but just little things would be playing, and Chris would go like this, and it was like, oh, I'm dragging, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just, a, just a little, little was it conscious, you think? Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> it was just like a little help for my friends, mm -hmm. you know, like, so those things, you know, you look, you look to each other, and then you take it, you take it in, and then, then you give it back, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going around Rosie a little bit, but, oh, it's fine. but I say that when I saw Johnny do that, or when I saw Roy Ames put his foot up on the I had stand and not play it, you know, for like three songs in a row, you know, at all. Mm. But like, you know, it's just, it's almost like, mm, I don't know how to describe it, the, the, the challenge of, of, of how, how little need be done, but how much mm -hmm. is actually happening, you know. And then, and then when you, then when you hear, hopefully a lot, it'll have, that much more power yeah. behind it, you know, but yeah, I, yeah, just a consciousness too. Yeah, you know, like you see yourself on the video with the shoulders up. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I had to, I had to see it. Yeah, because I was feeling it at night. You know that you wake up that weirdness or something. You know, it's like the body's holding that tension, and and it probably made the music feel a little nervous. Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't 
Yeah. So try to keep yourself. In the end, and last thing, I, over the years I used to sit very high, and that's very personal. You know, all these, you know, these pieces they have to fit together to suit you. So I've gotten lower and lower over the years, and it's helped me with a a certain mobility. You know, like not feeling like I'm I'm tied to this thing. Mm. Yet another thing I, I I remember seeing in Johnny V. You know, this flexibility in his self while he was executing all this stuff. So find that, you know, for yourself too, that, that ultimate comfort at the thing so that you can, you know, kind of, you know, you become part of it all in a chemical way, almost. Yeah, Thank yeah you. not many people know that Johnny, when he was a youngster, was a world-class roller skater. Yes. And he was, it was almost like he was almost like a ballerina. He yeah. won boards for like, so he has his, you know, why you think why he's so fluid and stuff like that. That's because and his final, his final uh, competition was at the national level, and he attempted to land a triple axel and failed. <laughs> but why not, right? Wow! <laughs> and when you play drums, you can, it's more forgiving. Well, you know, you don't fall off the drums, right? Hang on. So that that tells a lot. Ah, see, I didn't even knew that. The body awareness, yeah. So get some skates. <laughs> also, I had a question of how do you um, how do you get your sound on um, you know different drum kits? I've, I've heard of like, a lot of videos and recordings of you, and um, you know you, I know you travel a lot. How do you you know still maintain you know your sound no matter what instrument you're playing? Uh, um, you like those songs. Well, okay, yeah. yeah. This is these are my symbols, and that's that's pretty personal. Um, I mean, I, I guess I, to really do the Pepsi Challenge, I'd have to play that alone with this set, and then we'd know. Still, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. No, but I remember, you know, seeing David Lee playing and uh, and John plays, but like. Uh, yeah, the Jazz Fest gave him the cheapest set that <laughs> money could buy. Right, right in on, you know, and it just on sounded so great. They always, no matter what, they stepped up. They brought it's it's in it's in you. It's it's you bringing the sound to these things. You really are. I mean, there's a choice. There's there's great instruments that inspire you, and you again, you kind of become a little chemically attached to you know. You put yourself into. Did you ever get to hear Big John Thomas play? No, who's that? Was he a drummer? Oh. He made you think he was, the, he was the drummer. Wow. Yeah. Big John. Big Johnny Thomas. He played with Tom Waits and Leon Redbone. He's from the West Bank. He's still oh. playing. No, no, he passed. Oh, man, I wish but, I But, uh, you know, he, his drums, I mean, I'm on Bourbon Street playing with Danny Parker, and I walk by the Ivanhoe, and he's setting his drums up. He goes, talk and ask him. Look at these metal sticks I just got. They got a big sound. <laughs> I said, Johnny, I think they're meant to practice with. You know, this little. No. And I come back six hours later after the gig, and what was a drum set is now a pile of kindling. <laughs> <laughs> the cymbals are all dented up. Man, these sticks ruined my drum. Man, I'm back. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this guy could take a, a drum set. Well, you know, it, it never change a head on it. All the heads are dead, and just the way he hit me sounded like Steve Gadd's drums in the studio. Right. It's the way, it's the energy, it's the intent yeah. with which you strike your instrument. Yeah. Another Johnny Madoka story. His <laughs> earliest teacher, I think, is it Sewer? Don, uh, Charlie Sewer. Charlie Sewer. Sewer. Charlie Sewer. He said that, you know, they're in junior high or whatever, and there's eight drummers. He said he was strictly middle of the pack in terms of uh, rudiments, but he said he was miles ahead in sound. Because, and in, in the main ingredient for you is curiosity. He said, and, and I, I won't say who, but some people just live to play gigs with Johnny V on a terrible kit. It's like, all right, let's, let's watch him do it, because he will do it. <laughs> he will make you love that kit. And I, the last time I saw Paul Motion play, I was sitting on the front row, this was the last seat, and I hate sitting on the front row. 
I like to hide in the back. I thought, oh, fuck. <laughs> he started playing. I said, I hate that symbol. Wow. In 10 minutes, he had to dig. And he, his, he would say, round drums, round symbol. I don't bring anything. I had, I had to see. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same, the same experience. With him? Yeah, with, with Paul. I hate that symbol. Yeah. It's like, he found it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, is there, um, hopefully there's a grace period, you know? <laughs> like, oh, I, I, you know, I've had a few songs. I'm trying to, okay, where's some stars? So you find, even in the imperfections, you, the music, yeah, you want to, it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So, so being flexible with meeting a new instrument, everything wrong about it, in theory, but, but everything's okay with it, too. Mm -hmm. Even the ugly girl got some beauty. So. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy who made this song. Oh, he always used to say, you know, I, I don't want to make a beautiful thing. It's like I want to make a thing with character. You know, I want to make something unique. So there's that, you know, there's that, that duality for us, you know, we gotta struggle a little bit sometimes, but ugly, you know. Ugly be ugly, ugly you. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 in, it's in you, you just, you know, you bring it to the things. Hopefully bring it out. Thanks. Hmm. You think we could try Voodoo Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know. Definitely. <laughs> it's, it's not like you pretend you read. No, oh, it's not like it's <laughs> never hold. Gonna bring it. Conversations about Christian Science for about a thousand miles. Uh oh, starting to rain. Right. <laughs> Man, I got one page. Brian, you did it first. Oh, no, I got it. You only have one question. I don't want the music, but I got three tickets. You know, okay. I got that one too. Oh, okay. okay. There's another one of mine that um, actually recorded on the Voodoo Bop record. Uh, that's the project record for. Was that Compass? Compass? Quite a while. Compass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really describe like half hip hop, half school. That's what I usually have to say. Play the bass line. Yeah, we'll play the bass line.
sidewalk or whatever whatever you guys do because I understand more and, and, and uh, David and Johnny have a trio that regularly meets on a place at, at Snow Park. Oh, so, yeah. oh hey man, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. Yeah. Put a round of applause for Stan. Thank you. 